Let's jump over to Like a House on Fire. I've gone a couple of times on the first. Who, Kyle, why don't you go first? Yeah, I'll take it. So this one, you want to talk about pop influence, pop elements. This is by far the most pop influenced record. There's almost no metalcore present or metal in general. It's pretty much hard rock with elements of pop. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I do find quite a bit of these tracks to be enjoyable. Um, Down to Hell is a great song. Like a House on Fire, the title track's pretty good. Um, the Violence is probably the heaviest they go on here. And even that's not very heavy. I do think that it's, it's a little bit longer than it needed to be. I think if they cut out a few songs out of here, it might have been a little bit better. Like It's Not Me, It's You is I skip that one all the time. Take Some Time I thought was awful. That's one of my least favorite tracks of theirs. There's a couple of tracks mm-hmm. that sound like they'd be uh, Shinedown songs from the time period. And mm-hmm. conveniently, conveniently <laughs> enough, this is around the time they were touring with Shinedown, uh, which they still do pretty frequently. Like tracks like One Turns to None mm-hmm. sounds like it would have been on Shinedown's Attention Attention album. They don't want what we want and they don't care. Definitely a dig at the fans and the record label. They're like, no, you need to be heavy. And like, but we don't want to do that anymore, which is fair. You know, I'm not going to fault them for that. If that's not the music you want to make anymore, I'd rather you make something you're passionate about than just throw together some half-assed heavy songs to be heavy. Lorazepam, I actually enjoy that one quite a bit. I do think... What, that- Lorazepam or the song? Oh, never mind. Yeah, both. Uh, <laughs> I think there are some... They, as a band, were going through some like weird times here. I thought they were a little bit cringy ish i don't know danny was wearing a lot of hats at this time it's a little odd but but anyway it, <laughs> i think there's some tracks if they cut it out it would have been a better record with significantly less skips i actually enjoyed the feature um i don't need you it's a nice nice ballad there i enjoyed that but again it's very popish, pretty much out of nowhere like earlier i said that from death to destiny was where I wish they would have continued with their career. And I felt like the self-titled record was from death to destiny light where they were like, it was like diet from death to destiny where it's like, well, we're going to try that again. And then it didn't, you know, it didn't hold up to that for me personally. And this one was like, Oh, we're just going to completely shift our sound, which, you know, they were playing arenas with shine down and Papa Roach at the time. So it's not like it wasn't completely out of left field. I could definitely see they were going for those more big choruses and those big like stadium anthems, like those sing-alongs. And I I think they had had success with a couple of them on here. Other ones, a bit questionable. Production was a little bit better on here. Still not anywhere near as good as the production on the first four records, but uh, it's definitely not as muddied here. Uh, songwriting wise, unfortunately, didn't hold up as well for me. We got it at number six. All righty, Mike, do you want to go or do you want me to go? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. Um, yeah, like an album on fire, I'd like to light it on fire because it's annoys, it annoys me, and it's literally it's just a freaking boring uh pop. Uh, like, like injected, like barely rock album that I just all of the you know it just feels like it's desperately trying to integrate that sound. All the claps, the snaps, the beats, the trick, the other any other trick they can pull out. Try, uh, try and copy off some other freaking artist doing that at this time. Like the it's such, such an unoriginal kind of um encompassing of a certain kind of a sound that just doesn't lend any kind of interesting direction in the songs. You know, it just felt like um, it's very confused. Um, You know, the the guitars are rarely able to showcase anything, um, but just the backing rhythm to, you know, the vocals and stuff. And then not a dig at the vocals, but this is where this is kind of, um, you know, coming back to my comment about um, more depth and uh, showcase of vocal doesn't necessarily elevate the music if the music is subpar and the vocals are are more 
showcasing their depth and their more, um, you know, di the di diversity of the style. Unfortunately, they can't elevate the barely um, kind of uh, kind of music that's happening on this this uh, CD. So it's just. It's just boring. It's just not my thing. Um, you know, and I, I like some pop. It's just uh, not even the vocal, the choruses or anything to like um, stuff get stuck in your head or just, you know, just offer nothing but just space filler to me. So, yeah, I can't say much about this one. Uh, the This one and the next one, which, uh, spoiler, uh, are the bottom of the uh, of my uh Ring, ranking for this band it's just it's just like someone who has lost all of their um creativity and like the anything that they were willing to try to separate themselves from from like an easy album that just kind of does everything that's being done already um this is it you know what i mean and it's just like uh unfortunately that uh at this point in the career it's um trying to set a standard for uh Hey, look! I can I can do other genres of music because I'm mature. Even in his vocals, he says things like, um, you know, like things about certain things that are kind of hints towards that. And, um, one thing I hate about Danny Warsnop's like vocals is he's he kind of like he's such an immature person because he'll be like, um, I'll never change, and he even says I'll never change, and I'm, I'll be the same, uh, you know. Well, fuck you basically like i'm always going to be the same and you know even if it means like i die and i'm dead you know like i forget one of the songs i was hearing about even in death to destiny he was saying things like that i think probably the first song of the album he's saying you know like um these kinds of things and he's still saying them now and it's just like uh it just uh, it's just not a good album so number seven <laughs> what Damn a crash it, landing <laughs> Uh, you're ruining you kyle's me? list uh, well i was so confident in my predictions and now they are just completely out the window <laughs> um, before jt goes though i do want to build on something he said about his vocals mike about how they were he goes into showcasing his vocals a lot and doesn't really match the music to an extent yeah. mm. i 100 percent agree with that there's so many points here where he's yeah. showcasing that he's a good vocalist which he is there's no doubt about that. Like, there's no argument that yeah. he's not. But it has to be, and this is something that mm. I hate a lot with a lot of vocalists that do this. Um, Mariah Carey and Ariana Grande in the pop realm come to mind, where it's like, yes, I know you can do these long, mm. complex vocal runs. No, I don't need to hear it every other line in your song. It takes away from the songwriting aspect when you <laughs> do that. Um, so yes. I, the only thing I wanted to right. say about that was I highly recommend checking out his solo record the second one shades of blue the vocals on that and the mm. songwriting because the vocals actually match the songs on that one that's his uh like r and b mm. blues rock styled record phenomenal it's great the vocals shine while nice. actually matching what is going on behind it which definitely i agree and <laughs> some of the tracks you're not all of them but definitely some of them get off from that so jt why don't you uh why don't you go now? It's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> number oh, one. <laughs> yeah, this, you're, is you, number, said no. this is the creme de la creme of Ale asking Alexandra. <laughs> this is the best thing they've ever. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh my god. So listen, I'm I, I, full disclosure, everyone. If those of you don't know me or listen to me, you should. But pop music is not that bad. I mean, yes, some, <laughs> some people hate metal. Some people hate pop. Some people hate rap. It, it's all subjective. It's all good. Listen, if you're going to, when Kyle first told me we're doing Asking Alexander and that, uh, going up to from the very first album until this, I'm like, where's the metal? Where's the rock in this album? I'm like, what the, I mean, uh, don't go, I put, I put their stand up and scream at number seven. So this just give you a pretty good indication of where I put this one. But so many questionable decisions, so many, so, so many things. I was like, what is going on here? Like, what is it? Was so many, just, <laughs> even from what I already listened to beforehand, I was like, what is going on? Like, just so many questions, so many, <laughs> so many stupid decisions left and right. Good God, help us all. Let's just be real, everyone. Um, this is my number six. <laughs> yes, 
Yes. Like a house on fire yes. is my number six. And it's let's listen. The, this this is something that should not be held up like the Ten Commandments, right? This is something that should be held up and destroyed, one hundred percent. Take that scene. And smash it. <laughs> Swear to God. So yes. anyway, anyways, JT but, yeah. stole. He stole my villainness uh, here. <laughs> I, I'm being Some a villain sir. for this album. Good God! I was like, yes. I, I'm curious yes. to see what Kyle thinks where I put this, but this is my number six. I'll tell you exactly what afterwards where I thought you put all of them. Don't you okay, worry. Okay, just, just out of curiosity, because we're almost this is we got one more after this, right? So but yeah, like I was like, what were the <laughs> like you're a metal core, death core, hard rock, heavy metal, and I was, hey, let's just get let's get those fingers snapping. Don't forget to to, to like, our, like our review. I'm like, like, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> you're, you're asking Alexandria. Yeah. Like what the hell? So, so many yeah. questionable choices. And that that this it brings me to my point of it brings me to my point of nobody wants a side project anymore because it costs uh you don't get enough money when you aren't using the name asking Alexandria, waving it about, trying to, to sop up those uh leftover uh listens that you can get by using the name instead of just like taking this complete altered sound uh this complete skeleton of what was and just making it something new no no this is still asking alexandria it's just like you know uh look at the album some, cover for those who are know, listening yeah. to us you know, but look the album cover looks like they were just high the and they just, like they just drew, drew something on the wall <laughs> yeah it looks Good like God. hieroglyphics how, how uh, stupid can thing. you get <laughs> but, but JT, look at the left top corner there are boobies on the cover well, that, that changes good. everything. If there's boobies on the cover, that's yep. okay. There you go. That means it's one, good. Good art. One out of seven. There you go. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, it looks like something from like a. The, the, art is a one out of ten, or like a ten out of ten, whatever you want to call it. Yes. That, that's great art. Don't get me wrong, but it does not fit the album context whatsoever. Yeah. The artist right. should get a yeah. It looks like something from a every gu- album. It looks like some of an old metal band, like from like mm-hmm. the seventies and the, or the you know like probably the seventies. I would thing. say like something like you know Black Sabbath. Right? It doesn't look like something from yeah an Asking Alexander album, uh, like a uh, album on fire. Yeah, it looks like it looks like Black Sabbath. Like it, it looks like Black Played Sabbath's it tenth album that never got released and they just threw it out there. It was, it was produced by Matt. At bad, bad Matt, bad. Put Not this bad. thing back Not on bad. in the garbage. Yeah, well, at least, at least John bad. Davis wasn't near this one. Oh God! Nah, I don't know. I just want to hear him do that on the album. You know, like <laughs> any anything else for this piece of shit? <laughs> no, no. This is an easy. Move it on. Uh, pat- I I skipped path songs and then i had to go back and force myself to listen to them like tape my hand to the to the, you know so i couldn't try to change <laughs> like you know what i mean like i was like a mental patient like all right cuff him was there, He's trying to his eyes out. <laughs> was there any redeeming songs on this one for you no it was no, justin bieber's cameo I'm just kidding, oh i wish i could oh god no oh, grace grundy no i have no idea <laughs> no it all just sounded like one big freaking lumpish you know yeah, a lump Sorry. of poop. Was, but the boobies on the album cover. Are check great. There's some more. <laughs> the boobies on the album cover, though. What? Anyways, there I you go. There you go. That's what makes good album art. Yes. Yeah. There you go.